Out of the Fire is a stunning art book published by Heritage House featuring 24 West Coast artists and craftspeople who work in metal as their primary medium. Hear behind the scenes stories about making the book and chat with the artists in attendance, including local Salt Spring Island artists featured in Out of the Fire. That is happening on April 29th from 7 until 9 at Steffage Fine Art on Salt Spring Island. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much and enjoy the interview. Hello, welcome. Hello, good morning. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, really, really an honor to host both of you. My name's Kaylee. I have the backdrop of Steffage Fine Art, which uh, we're hosting a book launch that both of you are involved in. So if you'd like to introduce yourself. Well, I'll go first since I'm... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Purio Rates, and um, I actually lived on Salt Spring for four years back in the in the early 2000s. I spent most of my adult working life in newspapers as either a reporter or an editor. My focus and, and the love of what I loved doing was writing about artists and, and trying to bring their work out into the broader public. And I think that this book, Out of the Fire and Out of the Woods, the previous one, were a result of my own art background, my writing um, abilities, I guess, if you would say that. And, and they just, it sort of just seemed that they came together at a um, really important time for me as I I just retired, I needed something to do. And I just couldn't bake cookies and watch Netflix all day. So, so start out on a path. Meeting Dale was um, amazing and actually met him through a mutual friend, Phoebe. And Basically, we got them on board and twisted their arms and and borrowed all their equipment and used all their equipment and and um, they just um, Dale and Michelle and and Rachel did an amazing job with the photographs and the writing was just another aspect of it. I see it as a, a real partnership between photographer and writer, photographers and writers. Briefly. Um, I, I do have an art background as well and um, did a lot of um, one of a kind hand woven garments back in the back in the day, like way back and a lot of other kind of art projects. Just this is sort of a culmination of, of all of the skills I've kind of learned throughout my life. It's um, it's a wonderful kind of a project to, you know, to to leave. Right. So, yeah. Anyway, it's it's good. My name is Dale Roth. Uh... I'm from Roth and Ramberg Photography. Um, let's see, I guess I, my career, uh, born in Alberta, born in Calgary, and went to school in Edmonton. And that's where I met my business partner, Michelle. We, uh, fresh out of school, we assisted other photographers. And one day over beer and pizza, we decided to start our own business, thinking how hard could it be? And here we are 28 years later, still, still succeeding at it, apparently. We're in business, so that's good. <laughs> And uh, she's in Calgary now. I live in East Van. Um, and artist-wise, uh, well, we're advertising photographers, commercial photographers. So I'm not so sure we're we're on the artistic side where we execute what our clients need or or take photos of of something that would help them sell their product. Uh, but I think maybe you know, like Perio was saying, um, when I retire, maybe uh, I'll watch a little Netflix and bake cookies. But but it would be fun to do some fine art photography. So this is a kind of an interesting step because this book is a collaboration of writing and photography. And maybe one day uh, since I've done a book or we've done a book, uh, maybe I could do a uh, just a photo book. So uh, I've got a few ideas kicking around and we'll see what happens. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited to get my hands on it. I haven't seen it, so. Uh, we haven't either. No, I'm getting it, to, really? I'm getting it today. Oh, that's so great. Have oh, you seen a deal? No, you can no, I'm getting it this day. afternoon, Perio. Way to go. That's exciting. And uh, it's pretty thick. Like the first one, um, Out of the Woods, how many pages compared to Out of the Fire? That read the same, the same amount of artists that are featured? It's a, yeah, it's about the same amount of artists. It was a little trickier for this second book because of COVID and the ability to travel and people being um, hesitant to have you in their spaces and stuff. So, so it wasn't as um, 
fluid, I don't think, as, as the first one was. It was a little bit um, bits and pieces here and there and just had to kind of rein in um, a lot of the people that we most likely could have gotten in there. We just picked the people that, um, that fit, first of all, around our, our um, geographical area, and we had to sort of limit that. Otherwise, we'd, be, we'd still be interviewing people all over the place because there's so many amazing and so much amazing talent out there. So we just ended up doing a, a cross section and, and it wasn't um, uh, the, the best people or the, you know, the ones that you would consider artists or, you know, fine art or, or whatever. It was all of that. It was all of that and more. And was also people that were relatively practical, you know, but, you know, in, in their, in what they did for a living, but then they also had this other side to themselves that was very creative and, and imaginative and, and they put that out there. So, so it, it's been, yeah, it was like the first book. It was just these amazing people that, that were selected almost randomly. You know? <laughs> Definitely pretty fantastic to see how many, how many incredible people in this region just if we're just talking the the coast it's i can't even believe most of the 28 artists i represent are living on salt spring so to yeah, see a book so how many there's uh over 20 artists there's 20 have? 24 people what? featured wow. and there's um i believe seven of them or seven of the you know of them are from salt spring so that's a really good percentage and and wow. uh, you know salt spring is a hotbed for um i mean we found a lot of woodworkers there we found a, you know um, a lot of metal workers and 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 if there's anything forthcoming i'm sure there'll be a lot salt spring will be re well represented there as well so um one thing i was wondering is how you came up with the name like i know the first book out of the woods it's very clever is there a metaphor behind that coming well, out? Well, it, it kind of, I guess, in a way, like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, like earth, wind and fire. He sort of went with woods, you know, fire, wood, fire and um, potentially um, some other earthbound um, art, you know, oh. and, and uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I see it as being a series of three books representing then it would be representing like you know like 80 or 90 people which is which is just amazing because most people don't get any um um hi nobody highlights their work really or them or their their spaces and stuff so so it was um for me anyway um coming up with it with this idea was to showcase people in their spaces you know, and then Dale and Michelle, and they're they're the ones that brought those images into the book, and, and they're like they presented these people um, in a in a beautiful light and, and in an interesting way, with um, with their great photography and and their I mean in the first book I mean Michelle was climbing in the rafters to get the shot, oh, yeah. you know, and and uh, <laughs> this one wasn't quite as difficult, but it was um, it was in the winter. You know, like, so wow. there was a lot of cold standing around and stuff. <laughs> it's all a part of the process. I, I know well, I'm I, rambling, you know. <laughs> I, I think, I th but I think, Pirio, in the beginning, you, uh, there was uh, Phoebe and Pirio and yeah. Mel and I. Uh, it was, it was definitely, it's always been a team effort, but I think Pirio threw out some titles and, and, and somehow we selected out of the woods. So, uh, which worked perfectly. Well, how do you find a cover image to match out of the woods? And so we had things in the woods and, <laughs> In, in hindsight, it's a great title because this one's out of the fire. So it's, this was an easy one to name because it's out of something. You know? yeah. yeah. Out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really, I, it just is so, I love poetry and it's, it's so poetic and so few words, yeah. um, especially for being a fan of artists who just literally pull something out of nothing, um, which is just incredible. So yeah. Dale, how did you, how did you approach knowing that you're going to someone's place of creation and to just really bring that out to represent them in a, a portraiture, 
because these these photos are phenomenal and i could see especially knowing a couple of the artists you know that's ah so relative to their particular medium and personalities like how does that work for you uh, well i mean the pr the process yeah i guess especially these are uh people who aren't really about being seen in as a person right. it's more right. what they're creating uh well uh, process wise um usually usually we go into a space and just wander around and try to try to find the angle that tells the story so if it's a metal worker who uh, makes um, dinosaur masks, then you know what what do they have? And they've got a bench, and they've got welding tools, and they got vices. And so, trying to tell the story, trying to show the environment. So we pick the environment and then put them in the environment. Um, photographically, we 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 would take a couple sample photos and and just see what the light is already, and and. Um, usually we just try to add a little bit to it we don't want to overlight it so it looks like they're lit in a studio we just want to add a window or a, some some type of artificial light that looks uh real um so because we don't want to take away from them and their space so and we would shoot uh, with minimum depth of field so they're in focus and their backgrounds out of focus so just like your eye sees you know if you look at a lamp the lamp is in focus everything else is right. out of focus in the background so that's kind of the way we take photos of people especially because we want them to be the the central theme and and the background just sort of meld in the back so that's the process um you know we've been doing it so many years that uh, we we had a chat yesterday and and just everybody has something to say and everybody's smart in something that i'm not so it's easy to get people to relax just by asking them about what they do and and they know what they do and they're good at what they do so uh and i know nothing about welding or vices or metal tools so it's easy for them to talk to me because i don't i'm a sponge so that's kind of how we take the approach like we're not intimidating we're not telling them what to do you know i don't say sometimes i'll say cross your arms or something but if it's either the first shot or the last shot so they're either relaxed and you get it or you kind of massage them and then they get relaxed and they get in their pose and you go bang and that's it so that's kind, of, that's kind of how it seems to work anyway <laughs> is that would you say the same thing about your uh, more of the the words and, and pulling their story out Pirio? Uh, and how do you work together on dale's kind of on scene are you then harvesting are you both on scene at the same time as well yeah, most of the time yeah. most of the time we are um sometimes i will um you know do something ahead of time like at least in the first book not this one because we traveled together pretty much you know in, in our vehicles and and um i think it, it's um like i'm really curious person I'm, i mean you've called me snoopy really um and i just want to know what makes people tick and why they do what they do and um like how did they come to it or where are they from and and like i just want to i mean like i i sort of writing a um a little snippet of their life only part of it and trying to um get some um some not words of wisdom because that's not what i'm after but it it's um it's about people's passion for what they do and and try to get them to talk about it passionately and that is easy to write you know because it they're they're already there you're not having to really there's a few people that it's harder to get words out of them but you know over time as dale's running around clicking and taking pictures they start to relax and stuff so so it's um you know, like it, it, it sort of works really well, you know, that, I mean, a lot of the interviews are done, um, in an hour, you know, um, and, and it's, you know, yeah, I could, I could spend, you know, like two days following them around and stuff, but I don't think that I would get that much more. I mean, I'd get more words, but I don't think I'd get that much. Uh, they wouldn't be, any more open than they are at that time i don't think i could be wrong but um i i did hone a few interviewing skills over my years as a reporter and and i sort of figured out most of the time what questions to ask so so it it's um yeah it's it, it's really a lot of fun 
I mean, I, and I love meeting the people and, and seeing what they do. And, and like Dale said, I mean, he doesn't know anything about what kind of tool. Well, I've learned so much from people by interviewing them um, that I didn't, I, I wouldn't have had an opportunity otherwise to just to go up to somebody and say, hey, I want to do a story about you, right? And, and they look at you like disbelieving, right? And um, so this is um, a really nice way to um, showcase people or highlight them, highlight their work. Yeah. So on that note, what, was there a, a part of this book in particular that was um, just fascinating for both of you? I'm assuming they might be different stories. Like what uh, was an adventure that was memorable that might have been yeah, just uh, <laughs> getting lost on Salt book. Spring. <laughs> uh, sorry, getting lost? Getting lost on Salt Spring. I mean, I lived there for four years and I still took Dale in the wrong direction half the time. <laughs> Piero's, <laughs> a little dire Piero's a little directionally challenged. Well, uh, her, GP her GPS is a little direct. <laughs> yeah. It's not her, her GPS. <laughs> Even with GPS, yeah. 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 Anyway, um, there wasn't anything um, sort of. Uh, incredible um you know just apart from from the people themselves i i think um what about you dale what what uh, yeah they just uh, you know what sticks out with me is uh the the mermaid welding person what oh yeah I can't, I can't remember her name but anyway karen latsy yeah yeah karen karen yeah. yeah so i remember going to karen's uh studio mm. and uh she has like rakes and spoons and knives and pieces of metal that she found somewhere all in buckets all throughout her studio and she would make chickens out of spoons and knives and forks and i'm like that's incredible to take like a spoon and make a chicken out of it you know like that's i don't know how her brain works and i just and then that you know she was one of the people in the beginning and then they're all like that they just like metal's just metal you know, and sometimes it's in bars and sometimes it's made into things. And these guys take it and make it into something it's not. And it's like, holy cow, you know, these are just things that they create out of their head. So <laughs> made of metal, like, wow, it's a crazy, yeah. crazy. It's actually really quite incredible how many of the people in this uh, out of the fire are um, recyclers. Um, mm -hmm. they, they get their products from garage sales or dumpsters or backyards or you know old factories or something like they they they're the ultimate recyclers really in in a lot of ways and and also a lot of them a really good percentage of them are all um have gone to art school you know so so they're they've got they've already got this brain that um is is a creative brain and they they just um start doing it i mean they, they working with the fire is a way to get to accomplish what they have but what how many times so many of them said that that steel is so fluid you know and and you think about it as being solid but they see it as flexible and malleable and and workable you know and and it's like to my brain it's like wow you know like it you know it is it, i did take a, a workshop one one day with Jake James in, in the chosen and I've never worked so hard in my life. I mean, we used the, <laughs> you know, the hammers and, and stuck it in the fire and it wasn't, there wasn't any pneumatic presses or pounders or anything like that. And it was, I, I couldn't imagine, you know, like in the old days, those um, blacksmiths would have had arms about the size of a tree trunk or something like they were, it was really hard work. And, and these people just, gravitate to it and they just love it you know it's just it's just incredible actually yeah i wouldn't have thought metal as fluid that wouldn't have been but it's fascinating when they know their medium mm -hmm. oh it's easy huh? <laughs> for that yeah, right. <laughs> it's not easy <laughs> no not at all yeah oh, it's fascinating so uh, where could i get a copy of this book um when is it out any events coming up? <laughs> well, Heritage House Publishing has a distribution center, which is always found on the internet, but um, you can order directly from them. Or um, they have um, representatives that go to almost every bookstore in 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 British Columbia and you know, like elsewhere. So I, I think that if anybody was wanting it, they could ask for it at the bookstore, and they would they could order it in. 
or they could order it directly from um, Heritage House. Yeah, as, as I've seen on BC Ferries, the the last one. Yeah, too. it will be on the ferries as well. You know, so hopefully. You hopefully. Know, yeah. So, you know, and there's. Uh, yeah, I would just ask for it, you know, and, and because any bookstore will order anything that you like. Exactly. And we're hoping the artists, uh, well, they can order books for themselves and sell them through their studio as well. So yeah, hopefully yeah. they'll, uh, hopefully yeah. they'll do that. And then I think we're having a event in Salt Spring, aren't we? Woo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so there should be some, there should be some books there, I think. Oh, definitely. So uh, at Stuffage Fine Art, if you're on Salt Spring, uh, that's next Friday, April 29th from 7 to 9. Is that correct? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And then Victoria's what? Boland Books? Boland Books on the 30th from yeah. 7 to 8. Yeah, um, we're, hoping, we're hoping to have one in East Van at some point. To yeah. Working yeah. on the so details of that. We're just working on, on a, a few places. It doesn't seem to, you know, like it needs to be in, in, in a hurry. But, um, you know, we don't want to keep the momentum going, right, Dale? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, what I'll do is I'll put the contact details on where to get it. I'll update this video in the link in the description. Uh, so if anyone happens to watch this video and want it in their gallery or bookstore or something or want to host an event, I'm assuming they could probably just get in contact with you or Heritage Absolutely. House. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah wonderful. sounds great. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to fri next Friday. Next yeah, Friday. me too. We should... Uh, these Salt Spring artists are pretty popular, so <laughs> yeah, be nice. should be fun. I'm looking forward to seeing all those Salt Spring artists again and, yeah. and their work. It would be nice to see more of their work and uh, yep. appreciate it instead of trying to photograph it. So it's going to be yeah, yeah, going to be a lot of, of fun. The, one of the things that we ran into is is um, a lot of a lot of the artists. I mean, they don't necessarily have a any kind of shop or gallery store. So we could only photograph what they had in their studios at the time. I mean, they might have done a like a, you know, beautiful project, but it's, uh, you know, um, it's not accessible or it's, you know, it's somewhere, you know, somewhere else. And, and uh, so like all of them, even whatever is shown in the book as their work, there's, there's a lot more than that. You know, like they've done a lot more incredible work than what we were able to capture at that particular time so that's so exciting i've got a couple of the artists bringing in things next week so i know. hope great. to have some uh some items on display which uh will be great to pair with you guys both of you are in attendance so that's excellent too yeah. and uh that's great well, i'm looking to celebrate this massive collection of metal workers it's definitely a uh a real other level of creation, like both of you had said, you know, it's, it's to really devote your time to, to creating something in that manner. It's, it's a lot more, I wouldn't say skill, but uh, dangerous maybe <laughs> than a paintbrush. It's harder. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, that's just. Well, uh, the, the process itself is really, really interesting to watch, you know, because, um, like th there's been a, a, I think a real interest in, in metal work since that show um, forged in fire has been on television. So, so people, you know, have a little bit of an idea what's, you know, what they can make, but I mean, I don't think anybody's made like knives like Seth Burton, you know, on that show or, <laughs> or sculptures like um, Peter McFarlane or anything like that. Like they're, you know, like, this is such a, a beautiful um, uh, sort of variety, you know, of different types of metalwork. And, and our criteria was that you had to use fire, you know, in some way and, and some more than others, like, I mean, like in a coal forge or something is really quite different than someone with a butane torch, but it's still the same process is that they're melting or manipulating metal. And that was the, um, that, that was a criteria, you know, basically. So, so it's all good. Awesome. And then you kind of foreshadow a, another book. I'd love to hear about that. Well, we've, I've been rolling it around in my head and, and Dale's heard it, um, thinking about of the earth, uh, which would be ceramics and glass, mm. you know, which would be, um, astoundingly beautiful because, um, there, there, there's just 
there's so many people that do things and and glass isn't hasn't really you know like it's featured some places but but the work is getting so incredibly beautiful and and complex and and um you know lovely you know so it would be nice to you know combine the two i mean there probably would be enough to do one of each but you know got to rein it in somewhere for dale's <laughs> time michelle's time well you know everything in threes i think is the yeah. Way to go. yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah yeah i think i just to go out a little bit off topic what's what interesting with both books is uh we tried to show first we wanted to show a portrait of each person in their environment and, but then we wandered around their studio and showed their you know close up of their tools or their pile of dust or um the pattern Metal on the shape. wall yeah and 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 then it evolved to like their workshop so it became like if you are a woodworker or a metal worker it's interesting to see how other people work and where they work and what their space looks like so it's not just Oh, plus we photograph a piece of their work. So it's, we tried to do the whole board, right? It's like a portrait. Here's what the studio looks like. Here's what their work looks like. Here's snippets of ideas around their shop, just to give a feel of what they do. And uh, I think it, it would appeal to a metal worker and a woodworker for sure. Um, but other people as well to go, oh, that's, that's interesting how they do that. And that's interesting how they make that. So that's, it's not your ordinary book, right, Purio? No, it isn't your ordinary book. And and I think that um, like anybody that is sort of interested in a person's work that isn't either book, I mean, they're they're easily found on online, you know, um, whether somebody wants they would like them to commission a work or see more of their work, you know, like like I said earlier, it was difficult to get like nobody had their best pieces there they were sold or they were gone or they were you know they they just weren't there so um you know we it, we just tried to have a representation of the type of work that they do and and um and i think that we succeeded pretty well at that because um like everybody's different and we tried to get um people that were working in a different way or doing different things like i mean we've got a blacksmith in there you know that forges makes tools you know and and we've got a someone that shoes horses you know um and you know like they're they're all sort of part of a very ancient craft and and it's it's quite quite fascinating actually like um, I, I mean i love it <laughs> i love seeing it i think as well just to bring it into a broader philosophy that um representing incredible humans myself and I feel the arts is is some of the best that humans can bring especially in the world that we hear right now and it's chaos of destruction I think it's so honorable and I really pinch myself to be surrounded um, and networking even just with again I see you both as artists as well and in and, and creating something out of nothing and also sharing the best types of humans that I would probably never have known what some of these people's workshops have been like. And it's uh, it almost gives us hope for what our passions are. And I, I think that's my most excited part of the book that you guys get it because <laughs> you're you're watching and learning from these people. And I do that all the time. Like like we just got in a paper collage that took this woman, you know, probably three to four months to tear up and glue. And it's just mind blowing what some people do in their spare time, um, not just scrolling, but uh, but creating something and and yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's very nice to have a product at the end of of, of a long process, right? And, and, it, and it's nice to like what, when the first book, I mean, it, and it applies to, you know, still this one is when we first met with Phoebe and, and Dale and Michelle and myself over lunch or whatever, uh, um, you know, they, they sort of wanted to, to make a little bit of inroads into, uh, into BC because they were basically mostly out of Alberta. And they sort of thought maybe a, you know, story on a woodworker, you know, and, and I, I thought, okay, well, yeah, I can do that. And, um, but then realized that, you know, like 
because I was in the newspaper then, you know, and I could do something, but that would last a week. The newspaper lasts a week, you know, and I well, a magazine, well, that lasts about a month. So when, you know, then it was like, if we're going to do all this work, let's, let's make a book, you know, and, and it was incredible. We had a fantastic book designer, Laura Minja, that, um, from Lime Design, that, that sort of did a, uh, mock-up of what the book might look like for the publishers and and when they opened up that package that I sent to them they just you know they were on the phone (laughs) right because it was already the vision was there the layout was there the mood and the feel and everything was there already so they had I mean we'd done most of the work already well you know like it was our vision and and um you know editor uh Laura Cordick and and all of those people. I mean, it it still was um, it, it was a joint project between. Uh, yes, it was Dale and Michelle and I, but it was also um, Laura Minja and it was um, Laura Cordick and it was Heritage House and um, whoever helped us along the way and you know billeted us or or whatever you know and and uh, it it's nice to have something. Um, come to fruition you know after after all of that and everybody's efforts so so like I say I'm very pleased to to be the author but I'm not the only person um at all you know it's a team that's true my uh my boss Matt Stefich of you know, Stefich Fine Art that yeah. time, uh, managed his his famous word we actually put it at the front of the gallery which you'll see on Friday that it takes a village to raise a gallery and I mean in this instance takes a village to raise a book which is phenomenal Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's, that's very true. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's so exciting. Again, so honored that uh, you're both on the call and also coming on Friday. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. I'd love yeah, to yeah. get a signed copy. If, uh... Can't wait to get there. <laughs> yeah. I'll bring my pan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I'm All also right. going to have, sorry, um, I'm yeah. also going to have uh, in the truck of my car a few copies of the first book, Out of the Woods. So if anybody wants to grab it, you know, oh, match yeah. set. What's that? It's a match set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely bring one for uh, the gallery. I'd love to have both. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He's phenomenal. I can't have enough artists in one space. <laughs> well, what's really nice is that there's 24 artists in, in this, in this book, 26 in the last. And like, I mean, this book is about them. You know, and that is the the amazing thing is that there's, you know, so, I mean, if I can add in my head, I mean, there's, well, there's 40 artists that, is that 40 or is that 50? That's 50. 50 50 artists that would, um, you know, that are represented in as artists and creators, you know, in, in this small area you know, this small area around the Salish Sea. And, and I know that you could, I mean, the Salish Sea is pretty large. So, I mean, it, you know, we've only picked a portion of it, you know, um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's excellent. I mean, just to give them, because there isn't any magazines or anything anymore that I see where anybody's featured uh, about anything. So, you know, how wonderful for them, you know, and, and if they can give it to their kids. <laughs> parents or their you know yeah anyway it's it's great and it really wakes people up to uh wait a second that's in my neighborhood and i think that's that's really phenomenal how you know vast and you never know who's working on metal next door that's right (laughs) yeah well that's right yeah yeah wonderful all right well uh any final words before we uh wrap up the no I, I just hope to <clears throat> see a lot of people that are interested in metal coming out and um yeah just showing up and, and celebrating these artists that um that we feature yeah I'm looking forward to seeing all the artists in salt spring and hopefully they bring their family <laughs> and friends and like you said it's it's nice to give them some uh, a little shine a little light on them so uh that, that's kind of what makes it all worthwhile yeah yeah you're right dale exactly true awesome well again thank you so much and uh yeah it's been a pleasure looking forward to friday